Right, so we're going to be doing some fine tuning of a base large language model in Vertex AI. We're going to be using our own JSONL file that we're going to create, and I'll walk you through the steps of how to get going in Vertex AI, how to load up your JSONL file, what to look for, and um, ultimately deploy that new model to an endpoint in Vertex AI, and so that you can start using it. So let's go. All right, so what we're going to be doing today is fine tuning and training our own model and we want it to sound and respond like I do. So really um, what we're gonna be doing is starting up in Vertex AI. And um, if you haven't already create a bucket for your information, so really simply click on your hamburger icon, go to cloud storage and create a bucket um, for you to put your um, data. All right, so what we're gonna do next is click on language and you'll see over here called tune a model. All right, so click new tuned model. And um, what this is gonna be doing is it's gonna be using a JSONL file. All right, so what we wanna do is let's just walk through here and then I'll show you exactly what it's looking for because the um, instructions are on the next page. So let's just call this my tuned model underscore new. And we can base it off the text bison. Um, and the output directory just put it into the bucket that you've already created and go down to the advanced options now this is super important if you don't put in the service account it's not going to work all right so if you haven't already created your service accounts i suggest you do so click on svc chat so this is one that i'm going to be using and hit select all right the other steps over here you can play around with it but uh, for this uh, demo it's just going to be these defaults all right um, and now what it's going to say here is tuning data set. The data set is a JSONL file where each line contains a single example. All right, n number of recommended examples and view the data set documentation to learn how to prepare. All right, so let's go and have a look at the data set documentation. Okay, so here's a um, guideline on what it's looking for and how to actually create it. All right, so Tuning uh, foundation models needs to include examples that align with the task you want the model to perform. All right, so it's text to text and each row record contains input and is paired with an expected output model. All right, it also shows you here how many um, examples are required and uh, they want at least 100 to 500 examples for good results. Okay, so if you've got um, um, a lot of questions and a lot of answers and a lot of styling that you want to pop in um, it's well worth the effort to get this model fine-tuned so if you want to do something that's very sort of um, inaccurate or um, loosely based on your style do 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 the lower number but if you want it to be more accurate obviously the higher number of examples the better all right so here's a data set sample and the data set format and um, here's what it's saying that the um, output could look like all right, so what we're gonna do is let's just um, go into ai.google.dev and click on the get API key and uh, you'll be taken into Google AI Studio. Now, the reason we're gonna use Google AI Studio, it's got a lot of free credits and um, what we wanna do is just generate a JSON for us. Uh, so let's copy the style of JSON that we want and we can just pop in a uh, prompt here just saying create a JSON L um, output of 25 lines uh, for questions about AI. Make the output look like this. And then you can hit enter. And what it's going to do now is it's going to create. Um, 25 lines that we can then copy and paste into our uh, JSONL file that we want to train on. All right, so what you would be doing is ultimately taking this information and um, looking to write your own answers for it. Okay, so here's the information and all right, so as you can see here, it's basically um, popping it into a um, format that we can use all right and what we can do now is just go into our um, 
into our space where we've created a JSON L file. So really simply, all you do is create a new file and create a text document, and then you can just rename it to JSON L. I'm using TextPad, and I find that it works really well. All right, so let's just open up my text, uh, my JSON L, and let me show you what I've done to get it to work. All right, so what it's done is it's created the questions for me. What I found is super important is to add context, or else it um, the model throws out. And what you need to do is just make sure that your output text is over here. And you can then start to just fine tune it a little bit more. Um, so I've added happy days to the end of all of my um, outputs over here, just to give it a bit of a more friendly, happier tone. Um, I've only got 10 records in here. Um, you would need a lot more to train. Uh, but this is just to get you going and to show you how it works and how to um, get your models um, built up in Vertex. Right, so what we've got is our training data set. Uh, like I said, you're gonna have to update your output text to whatever you feel is more um, congruent with your style. Uh, so you can close that off and let's jump back into, um, into Vertex AI. All right, so now we've got our uh, JSON L file. So what we want to do is just select it and we can just choose that one there. And where do we want to pop the output? So you can just choose one of your buckets that you've already created. Um, so I'll just pop it into that bucket for now. And um, if you wanted to enable the model evaluation, you can. Um, it does increase the time it takes to do the um, uh, training. Uh, so yeah, use with caution. It does take about, so for a record of about 10 to 15 um, line items, it takes about 30, 35 minutes. Obviously the more um, line items you have in your JSON-L file, the longer it's going to take. So bear that in mind when you're training your data. All right, and what we can do now is click on start tuning and um, hit the start tuning button. And what you'll see now is it will start running in the background. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, because it takes a little while to run, um, I've already done it um, in the background um, and let it run. And basically what you can see here is, if you wanted to see how it's performing, click on it, and it'll open up your pipelines. All right, and it'll basically show you what steps it's going through, the number of steps it's completed, and um, you can see if there's any errors or any problems. Um, word of warning, if your JSON-L file is not formatted 100% correct, it will fail, um, so always check that. The other thing to check is make sure you're using your service account, um, or else it will fail. So these are the things that I've learned, um, and hopefully it saves you a huge amount of time um, and that's top tip there. All right, so let me jump back to a model that I've already um, fine-tuned. So as you can see over here, it succeeded. And if we had to look at the time, it took around 32 minutes to complete. All right, so once we've created your model, it automatically deploys it to an endpoint. So what we can do now is just go into language. And now how do we interface with that new fine-tuned model? All right, so we're gonna go into our text prompt over here. And in your model on the far right, you'd be able to now see your new model. All right, so there is my new tuned model. All right, and you can set all your sequences or your um, temperatures and all that kind of stuff. And now you can interact with this model as um, a fine tuned version of the Text Bison um, large language model. And the Text Bison is absolutely perfect for this type of scenario. It's uh, um, it's eventually going to be merged with Gemini, so don't 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 stress about the accuracy of it. Um, so what you can do now is you can just type in a question. It's like, what is Tyron's view on AI? All right, um, it doesn't know who Tyron is, but because we've trained it, um, we should get an answer um, from this model. So make sure you've selected your tuned model and let's hit submit. All right, uh, so there we go. So it's a powerful tool that can be used for good or evil. It's important to be aware of the potential risks and to use AI responsibly. 
Uh, so yeah, that's um, pretty much what uh, kind of tone and the style that I would be using. Um, I've got a bit of a dark sense of humor sometimes, but it's really for good. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, what you would do over there. All right, you can obviously test it, fine tune it a little bit more. Um, and then what you would do from here is if you uh, wanted to use it in production, grab the code and um, start uh, fine tuning the model that you're actually looking for. Okay, um, so you're gonna be from the pre-trained text bison, get the tuned model and um, yeah, so you basically select the tuned model that you wanted um, and that's how you would select it over there. So don't use the, the standard um, model, select the model that you've um, actually typed in and there's the model name um, that's gonna be used in your application. All right, let's click close. And um, yeah, and that's it for today's uh, session. So hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you've got some, um, some good use cases and fine tuning of your data style and your outputs. And um, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and let's, uh, yeah, hopefully you had fun.